Ex-inmates of Reddit, what's the stupidest thing you've seen a new inmate do on his first day in prison? Father-in-law did 12 years on a second-degree murder rap back in the very early 90s. He told me that one time this new guy plopped himself down at the Hells Angels table and started eating breakfast. When he was told to move, he ignored them. After breakfast, the COs ended up having to cut through about six rolls of duct tape to get the guy loose. He never sat near the HAs again. Not me, but my dad. Guy came in bragging about what he did, said he was a monster and the toughest guy around and that he could take anybody on in the pen. Giving him the benefit of the doubt, he was apparently a pretty big and tough guy. Come to find out, though, he was in for assault, rape, and then murder of a woman and her child. He might have been big and tough, but not after five big guys beat the absolute shit out of him and practically killed him. As most of you know, one thing all prisoners can agree on is that anyone who messes with kids or women are on an immediate hit list. The woman thing might have just been a rule amongst him and the people he ran with. Where I was in prison, they utilized 40 millimeter soft round launchers to respond to group disturbances. Let me tell you, they weren't soft. Kid comes in thinking he's still hardcore from juvenile hall because guards there didn't do anything when people fought. Decided to up and join a gang that he knew nothing about on his first day. Thought he was tough and started to diss the gang they had high tensions with at the time and started a group disturbance. COs respond, tell him to get down, he refuses and curses at them. Boom! 40 millimeter to his face. Was an accidental shot to the face, according to the CO. Face was distorted as hell after. Fractured skull. On his first day. There was an old myth that if you challenged the meanest guy in your block to a fight, everyone else would leave you alone. It's true, no one will torment you if you are dead. Kid tried it and got dropped off the fifth tier. First day in gen pop, last day in gen pop. Most guys just want to do their time alone. Most rape and violence in prison is about debt or tax. If you play it straight, 98% of guys will just leave you alone. Fucking someone up on the yard makes your times worse, not better. Loss of privilege, of time in solitary, most people don't want that. Most of the straight up psychopaths are in 23 to 1 lockdown anyway. You get in debt or shoot your mouth off and you will get settled or taxed. You get in debt or shoot your mouth off and you will get settled or taxed. Both are to be avoided. This may have not been his first day, but I will never forget this. This was while I was in the in-tank tank, which is the first tank or section you go into after being processed in county. This young kid comes into county and keeps complaining that he doesn't get his cannabinol and other marijuana-related prescriptions in jail. He was really arrogant and constantly pissing everyone off. During count one day, as we were all in our bunks, he starts complaining again and then says to the guard, what if we all riot? Immediately, like 10 other guys yell very loudly, we don't know or agree with him. The guard then says, what the fuck did you say? The kid then continues about rioting and that he has rights. Everyone in the tank fucking stays frozen in their bunk, trying their best to be non-threatening and also show they have no interest in what this moron is saying. So the guard picks him up by the throat and slams him into the wall. After scaring the kid shitless, he explains he has a new charge for inciting a riot. Kid gets hauled off to solitary. Never saw him again, but I heard he spent the rest of his 30, 60, 90, whatever amount days in solitary. Absolutely insane to me that he'd say that in a fucking county jail. Just going to generalize... Small town folk who are used to being the biggest and baddest, big fish, small pond types who think they are going to be king when they walk in, they usually are dominated pretty quickly. Dominated being either beats or made into a bitch. Best bet if you go to prison, hopefully no one ever goes, is unless you know someone well-connected on the inside, just keep your head down, focus on yourself, and do your time. It's going to be boring, menial, and seemingly endless, but you don't want to get caught up in any gang stuff or be snitching. 
There's a code and system in prison that needs to be followed, and if you walk in like King Shit of Turd Hill when you are a nobody, you will learn real quick that you ain't nothing. Went in when I was a young idiot. Our pod was all bunk beds, no cells. Just the room with beds and a side room with the TV. It was a unit for all the people working the same job. New guy comes in, a little white dude, quiet and kept to himself. Until one night, out of nowhere, he starts sprinting around the room, singing at the top of his lungs in the tune of Black Sabbath's Iron Man, but changed the lyrics to... I am the N-word man, running through the hood from the Ku Klux Klan. Everyone was just kind of frozen for about 15 seconds, seriously confused. Then someone tripped him, and then it was just mayhem until the CO could get enough help to disperse the crowd. I remember being surprised when he survived. Everyone in the unit had steel toe boots for the job we did, holding them and hitting him in with them instead of wearing and kicking. The scene afterwards where all the guys are trying to figure out whose boots are whose and comparing whose had the most blood was freaking surreal. I did 14 years in federal prison for wire fraud. I got out last February. I'm 36. Some things I can say are these. While your sexuality may not be an issue outside of prison, inside prison, male inmates who are openly gay are generally disrespected. Gambling and drugs create debts that are at some point unable to be paid and can result in serious issues for yourself. Most prisons operate a social hierarchy based on gang affiliations or hometowns, although there can be large separations based on race. However, rapists and child molesters will basically be free game for anyone who wants to take their shit or torment them. You might have been a badass outside of prison, but generally you can't fight several people at once. Which is what would happen if you talk about how much of a badass you are. Keep that shit to yourself and don't talk to crazy people. Which is seen as disrespect. Respect slash disrespect has a different meaning in prison. And you'll figure it out. Best to keep to yourself as much as possible unless you want to embrace prison life and become institutionalized. Prison is not a place to make friends. I got bunk restriction while I was in jail on one of my first nights. Twice a day, they did roll call where we all had to sit on our bunk, be quiet, while the officer came bunk to bunk and checked all of our wristbands, and made sure we were all who we are. Halfway through he was doing this, someone rips the loudest, fattest, longest wet fart I've ever heard in my life. Me, having the mind of a five-year-old, burst into laughter. I've never heard a fart like this in my life. A few other guys laugh, but even thinking of it now, I giggle about it. Anyways, the officer is all like, all right, settle down, but I can't stop laughing about it. He tells me to calm down, but I tell him through my tears of laughter, I literally cannot help it. I really couldn't. It was the funniest thing that had happened the few days I was in there. Anyway, he gets pissed. I try to explain I'm not being rude and disobey him through my laughter, but he isn't having it. Luckily, he just gave me bunk restriction and didn't punish everyone, but I could see the TV from my bunk, so I just hung out the rest of the night. TLDR, I couldn't stop laughing at the biggest fart I ever heard in my life and got grounded to my bunk for a night. Spent a year in a Bangkok prison. Saw lots of shit go down, but the one story I have that's relevant to your question has to be this English guy that turned up one day. It was actually the first and only other British guy I would encounter while I was there, and the moment he came through the gates, I was called over to try and communicate and translate for him. He was refusing to talk to anyone, basically going on a silent strike, because he thought he wasn't supposed to be there, and they were denying his human rights and all that shit. First thing that happens when you enter the prison is they shave your head. This kid had massive dreadlocks and didn't want anyone touching them, but at this point, he had already made his bed, and he was going to have to sleep in it. I went over to him and introduced myself, asked him what his name was, where he was from, etc., but he just stared at me in silence the whole time. One of the guards gave me a photocopy of his passport so I could see his name, age, and where he was from, etc. Against all odds, this kid was actually from my hometown, so my face lit up. Finally, I would have someone to talk to, and I'm sure we could chat shit and bond while we were in there. 
God, did I need that. But he just refused to engage with anyone, even me, who was trying so hard to get a word out of him. I explained over and over that he'd lost the game. He's in prison now, and there is no way out of it, so just do what the guards say. They're going to shave your head, first of all, and there's nothing you can do about it. Because no one had explained to me what exactly was going on, I was just confused why he wasn't talking to me. The more I spoke to him and the more he refused to talk back, the more pissed off I got. I just couldn't understand why he was being so difficult, and by the end of our encounter, I was fucking shouting at him, telling him to stop being such a little bitch and just accept your fate. I didn't know if he was mentally handicapped or genuinely couldn't speak, but it became clear that he was just putting on an act. Eventually, I just told the guards there is fuck all I can do if he's not willing to speak, so go ahead and do what you've got to do. I said my goodbyes to him, and I told him that he really needed to accept his fate. It will be easier on everyone. And when you're ready to talk, I'll be here, because let me tell you, that's the best thing you could hope for in a place like this. He ended up being pinned down by the guards and his dread shaved off while he was screaming and screaming. Of course I felt bad, but come on, time to swallow your pride, mate. He was then admitted to the prison and he came to sit with me. He still refused to speak, so I got a notebook and pen and we communicated via writing for a few days. The guards didn't know what to do with him and all the prisoners just thought he was a mental case. I still wasn't sure myself. After a few days of gossip, another prisoner told me that the kid was faking it. When I asked how he knew, he told me that he was arrested at the same police station with him. And the whole time he was in custody, this kid had been screaming bloody murder at the officers. He started asking me about the embassy, and I told him about what services they offer and how they can help, etc. Then he wrote down on the paper, Can I make a phone call through the embassy? I just looked at him dead on and said, What good is a phone call if you can't fucking talk? I couldn't help but chuckle, and he knew the gig was up. At least with me it was. Not long after that, the kid was taken from the prison and carted off to a mental health institution so they could evaluate him. I didn't see him for a few weeks when he suddenly reappeared looking very disheveled and completely traumatized. And wouldn't you know it, he could suddenly speak. He started telling me about the horrors of the mental institution he had just experienced and... My god, it sounded fucking awful. Even worse than the hellhole I was currently in which is really saying something. We bonded for the month or so he was there, and we exchanged details. I have spoken to him since I've been out, and it turns out we have a fair amount of mutual friends, which is one hell of a coincidence. Anyway, the point of this story is he was a fucking idiot for simply not cooperating with the guards and the prison rules. It's all well and good putting up a fight in the courts and with the local police, but once you're past that and you find yourself in prison, just fucking do as you're told. They can make life so much worse for you. My family attorney told me about one of his clients who was sentenced to two years for a federal case. Nonviolent. Someone gave him really bad advice about how to survive in federal prison. He followed the advice and found a big, tough-looking guy on the very first day. He beat him up severely. The victim turned out to be a tough-looking guy who was actually a gentle giant who didn't fight back much, ended up with two broken legs and a fractured rib. My attorney's client got four extra years added to his two-year sentence. That's what I call stupid. This was about 15 years ago. Not sure if the guy survived prison or not. Long, but funny story. I worked for a PD. We arrested a local regular on an outstanding FTA warrant, the guy was always a pain in the ass. The county jail was full, so we were contracted with an adjacent county jail, nicknamed the Workhouse. It was old and nasty and had a much tougher urban clientele. It took about 45 minutes to drive there, and on the way, the prisoner was being chatty. He asked me to do him a favor when we got to jail, which was, don't put me in with any of those goddamn N-words. We get to the jail and sit the prisoner on the bench. There is a large black woman working at the intake desk, and she and I process the paperwork. Fifteen minutes later, I'm headed out the door when I stop and look at the prisoner on the bench. I turn to the woman and say, Oh yeah, I forgot. He has a request. The prisoner starts violently shaking his head, No. 
The woman chuckles and says, Oh yeah? What's that? I repeat his request that he doesn't want to be put in with any goddamn N-words. Her eyes get real big, and she smiles at me saying, Yes, sir, I'll take care of that. The prisoner looks like he was going to pass out. She immediately called for two guards who came from the back, dragging logging chains. These were two black guys who looked like they were linebackers in the NFL. I smiled at the prisoner and walked to my cruiser. Here in Canada, there isn't really any rape in prisons, as they look at it like, how can we beat up or kill sex offenders if we're ones ourselves? It was my first time in a federal pen, and I didn't know this golden rule. The first day I got there, I was assigned a cell, and when I went in, this older guy was in it, my future celly, cellmate. He told me the guy who had the bunk before me wasn't really a clean guy, and I should get some disinfectant and a mop, and pointed me in the direction of the cleaning supplies room. I went in, and I was filling my mop bucket when I looked up and noticed these kind of shelves on the wall that said, Government of Canada on them. In the shelves were condoms and lube and bleach. My eyes widened and I went back to my cell and whispered loudly to my celly, What the fuck, they're encouraging rape? I told him about the condoms and he laughed. Bro, there's gay guys in here who have consensual sex and it's their way of stopping HIV. We just use the bleach to clean our tattoo needles and dye our hair if we get bored. Former CO here. I was in what's called the intake building. When people would come in for their first day, I would hold their papers in my hand all official-like, put my shoulders back, and loudly announce, Gentlemen, line up, toes on the line. Welcome to Building 5. You will remain in your cell for two weeks. Your property will arrive within one week. If it doesn't, you may then let me know. At this prison, disputes are settled on the yard with a dance-off competition. If you have an issue with someone, let us know and we will provide cardboard. Now everyone, on the count of three, you will do ten jumping jacks. Occasionally, a first-timer would do one jumping jack, and everyone would laugh. Never been an inmate, but I did work as a jailer for a short period of time. I was always assigned to the felony pod, so I knew there were a certain number of guys in those pods that really didn't give a fuck. But I didn't dick guys around or be an asshole for no reason, so I was well-liked by most of the inmates. One guy came in his first trip to the Slammer, because he got zanned out and drove into a gas station, then proceeded to snag some cigarettes and other convenience items. I often considered the lifters to be the most laid back, especially the older ones. Don't fuck them, they won't fuck you, but mess with them and they mess back hard. So this day, I was sitting at one of the tables chatting with a couple of the older long-term residents, and this new guy comes in and sits at the table. The old-timers ask the new guy, So, what are you in for? This fucking kid never even looks up and just says, Murder. I knew what he was in for, he knew what he was in for, and these other two well-experienced prison attendees knew damn well he wasn't there for murder. One of them almost snatched him from across the table. I intervened quickly and explained to the kid that this experience could be as shitty as he wanted to make it or as simple. He could lay low and be in and out and back to his regular life, or he could enter this darker world by being a smartass when asked a simple question. I'm sure he was just scared being his first time in and wanted to maybe make a big bad impression, but telling two killers that you killed when you barely have hair on your nuts is a very bad first step. If I recall correctly, he stayed in three days waiting to bond out, and he didn't leave his cell other than to grab his tray and scarf down his food. He never even looked towards the shower. Not prison, but I was in juvenile hall. This was in Minnesota, and racial division isn't as strong up here, so even though I was half white, half Hispanic, since I was loosely affiliated with a blood gang, I was allowed to walk with the black guys in there, but I mostly kept my mouth shut and only got into fights when someone put hands on me. So this bigger black dude comes in for assault, and since he was a crip, he was beefing with the group I was in. And he starts talking shit about how our group was weak for having a white kid in it, and took shots at me. He got cocky and started pushing me around, so I pushed him back. And then he tried to tackle me, but I got him in a front face lock and kicked my legs back to drag him down, and as soon as I had him locked down, I started pushing my fist into his throat to choke him out. Eventually, we got broken up by two guards, and not gonna lie, I was fucking terrified. But he got made fun of so much for losing to me, not only because I was white, but because he was bigger than me, that he immediately lost credibility after that. 
Worked as a CEO for five years, and the dumbest thing I've seen was a young wangster, wannabe gangster, comes in and starts asking this one guy what he's in for, and guy just straight up backhands him. Big pimp hand power. And starts yelling for us to get the young guy away from him. We separate them and get the young guy to a different seating area, and he just wouldn't keep his mouth shut. He also kept claiming to be affiliated with the Houston, and he saw someone from his, so he sat with them, but real gangster did his own investigation and found him out. Young guy got his ass beat once again. We found out the young guy did have tattoos that closely resemble the same tattoos as the Houston Tango Blast, but he obviously wasn't affiliated in any way. Some chomo got moved to our block. Can't remember if he was new or not, but we all knew he raped a little girl, and was in this time because he violated his parole by being at a library. He apparently told someone he was allergic to green beans and offered them up at lunch. The next day, everyone in the block, 32 of us, was told to give their green beans to this inmate who was basically the tough guy, who happened to be Chomo's current cellmate. That night, he shoved them all down Chomo's throat. Chomo moved blocks later that day. No one got in trouble.